Good evening, everybody. Come on. Good evening, everybody. Oh, no, 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 no. This is supposed to be the youth tent, right? Y'all got to sound more lively than that. Good evening. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Well, hold on. You know what? Um, um, If you're happy in the Lord, let me see you raise your hand. How many of y'all love the Lord this evening? No, come on. How many of you know that the Lord is in love with you? Raise your hand. Now, one of the things I want you to understand about me is this week we're going to have a good time praising God. We're going to have a good time talking about the greatness of God. And if nobody else enjoys God but me, I'm going to enjoy God. But I don't believe that's going to be the case. Not here, not from what Pastor Eddie told me, that you all love to praise God in this place. Um, my name is Ronald Pollard. I am married. This is my wife, Lindsay. Uh, we've been married going on 15 years. Can you say amen? Oh, no. Amen. That's right. That's right. The day we got married, the month we got married, there were about four or five other couples that got married and they all divorced within that first that first year. But we're the only ones that have survived and thrived and love it. That's right. That's right. Come on, clap. That's right. Um, I believe I have we have enjoyed New Zealand. It is beautiful here. Absolutely beautiful in New Zealand. And when we got here, my wife said, you know, honey, we need to think about retiring or moving here. So y'all, y'all pray for us, all right? We're looking very seriously in New Zealand. And, um, but it is beautiful. It is beautiful. You're to be commended. I appreciated the service, the welcoming. I want to thank my pastors. I want to thank all of my brothers and sisters who welcomed us. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. I want to bring you greetings from Los Angeles. That's where we, we well, Riverside is where we live, but my territory that we work is Los Angeles. Um, we are happy to be in New Zealand, y'all. <laughs> New, anybody been to Los Angeles in here? Raise your hand. Anybody here know what I mean when I say traffic jam? Unreal. I mean, 10 miles can take you to almost three hours. And it is so good to be here where it's peaceful. To us. <laughs> um, but we, we, we love the country. Um, but thank you again. Praise team. Give a hand, hand clap for our praise team, y'all. Dynamic. I appreciate them very much. And the band, you know, guys, we're going to get to know each other better, but I love the band, too. Um, <sighs> chosen is the theme. Chosen is the theme. How many of you really, really, and I don't want you to raise your hands, but I want you to think about this. How many of you really are enjoying your relationship with God? I'm not asking you to respond now, but I want you to think about this in your mind. How many of you really are enjoying your relationship with Christ? enjoying God in the fullness thereof and enjoying getting to know God and enjoying spending time with God? That's an important question because if you really enjoy the Lord and if you really understand what it means for him to choose you when he didn't have to choose you, then you'll be committed. You and I will be committed to doing God's will. But not only doing God's will, we'll be committed to having a good time doing God's will. Sometimes it's not always easy. God may call us to do things that are out of the box or uncomfortable. But when you understand that God chose you when he didn't have to choose you. When you understand that you owe God, he does not owe you. Then you're happy to be called and to be in his service. Um, I want you to bow your heads with me. We're going to spend a few moments in God's word this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We thank you. Lord, uh, if not for your love, we would not be in this place. So, Father, in the very name of Jesus, in that powerful name, we want to give you all the glory and all the praise because you're worthy. In Jesus' name it is, we pray. Let everyone say amen. Um, take your Bibles and turn to First Peter. How many of you have your Bibles? If you have your Bibles, raise them up. Hold them up. First Peter chapter five. 
First Peter chapter five. When you have it, let me hear everybody say amen. Oh, come on, everybody. You got it. Let me say amen. All right. All right. Um, First Peter chapter five, verse eight. I want to thank the teachers also. For doing their part. Thank you, teachers. Um, by the way, I want to say something before I, you know, Pastor Toupe, everybody know Pastor Eddie Toupe? Y'all know him? Huh? Toupe. Yeah. Toupe. All right. Toupe. Uh, where is he? Where is Pastor? Raise your hand, Pastor. Wait, don't try to hide. You know you're too big to hide. You know you're too tired, too tall. Okay. I want y'all to know he's been a gracious host. He has been a gracious host. He has truly been a gracious and wonderful host. He he told me I was going to be hungy. Did I say it right? Hungy? Okay. And, it, you know, it's a beautiful, it's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I have to think of something, you know, when we go home, too, to when he comes over and do something like that to him. <laughs> First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Let's start at verse 5. It says, likewise, ye younger Submit yourselves unto the elder, yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Verse 6, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And verse 7, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And in verse 8 it says, be sober Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resisteth steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accompanied in your brethren that are in the world. But our focus is on verse eight. It says, be sober, be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Oh, just about a year ago, I had the chance to witness something absolutely remarkable. Anybody here ever seen the Discovery Channel? Y'all know that, the Discovery Channel, right? And you know how on the Discovery Channel, um, they'll take the video and they'll trail one animal or a, a herd of wildebeest or a pride of lions and they'll talk about how you know, the, the lifestyle and the, the, the hunting habits and the speed at which all of this happens. Well, let me tell you something. TV is far from reality. Even though on TV you can see it, you can under, you can, you can watch it. But when you're actually there, it does something to you. When you're there, it actually, it, it, it you see, TV gives you a picture. And it paints, it paints a, 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 a nice rosy picture. TV gives you a, 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 an edited version of the reality. While one day, I just so happened to be on the Maasai Mara. I just so happened to be on a safari in Kenya. And I had the opportunity, young people, to see some things that really blew my mind. Our safari van, there were about six of us in our van, had decided that we were going to follow the wildebeest. And so one day while we were out there on safari, we do this mission trip and we go to, we go to Africa sometimes and we take young people on these mission trips with us and we go out there and we, we're on the safari and, and well, one of the features of the mission trip is at the end of the mission trip, the young people get to see, uh, go on safari for three days and two nights, all right? And on this, in this particular year, there were about a gazillion wildebeest out there. Just thousands of wildebeest all across the African plain on the Maasai Mara. No, the African, the, the wildebeest were not running through downtown Nairobi, Kenya, all right? 
They were on the safari out there in the wilderness. And we just so happened to go out there. And one day we saw something that was just remarkable. We got the chance to see, first of all, thousands and thousands of wildebeest. That's remarkable because everywhere your eye looked, the, the, the van had to navigate through wildebeest, herds and herds of wildebeest. And one day we saw this wildebeest, this, this, this family of wildebeest. And the safari driver said to us while we were in the van, you know, people coming from another part of the world don't know what they're doing. So they're just talking and laughing on the safari and they're not understanding that you need to be quiet while you're on safari because you might miss something or you might scare something away. And it's only once in a lifetime you get to see this. Well, the safari driver saw something off in the distance. And he said to us, he said, shh, 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 pasta, pasta, tell your group, be quiet. Y'all need to be quiet. Shh, shh. So everybody got quiet. He said to us, he said, look, look, look. I said, what? We said, what, what, what? He said, off to the left. He said, do you see? How still it is over there? I said, still? It's, man, it's a bunch of wildebeest. What do you mean it's still over there? He said, look, it's real quiet over there. The wildebeest are not moving. We said, well, what does that mean? He said, that means that there's something is about to happen. So he took the safari van and he started to go over there and he started to drive over there real slowly and quietly, as quietly as a safari van could go. And he said, just watch. When we got there, From where I am to the back of that tent, there are about 50 wildebeest standing still. Didn't move, even with the safari van. And he cut off the engine and he said, watch. He said, watch. We were looking. And all of a sudden, we heard something. And the wildebeest scattered, not because of the safari van, not because of us dumb tourists just talking loud, but they heard the roar of death. And they scattered. And all of a sudden, you saw clouds of dust. Now, this is not natural geographic. This is with my own two eyes. We saw them scatter and they were booking. They were hustling. They were running. And all of a sudden, you saw one area where four legs went up in the air and there were three lionesses surrounding this one wildebeest. One, one lioness had her throat on the wildebeest, I mean, had her, her mouth around the wildebeest's neck. The other had its paws on the thighs. And the other just stayed and watched and looked. And what was remarkable, and see, National Geographic never showed me this. What was remarkable was that they did not kill the wildebeest. The wildebeest was just there. It was just there. And the wildebeest, you could hear the wildebeest calling out for help. And you could hear, you know, I'm, a, you know, I'm not a wildebeest, but I'll do my best. There you go. Mm, mm. Calling out for help. Well, the herd of wildebeest that it belonged to was over on the right-hand side looking at that one. I guess they were saying, fool, you shouldn't have got caught. (laughs) But they were just looking, just watching. And they, then all of a sudden, the wildebeest that was caught by the three lioness was still alive. And one for a moment, the one with the mouth around the neck decided to release the pressure. And then the wildebeest tried to get up and start running. And as soon as it got up, the, the, the other lion that was standing watch took its, took its claws and you could physically see the claws protrude from that lion and grab the hind quarters of the wildebeest and yank it back down. And the wildebeest crumpled them. And then as if to say, we are tired of these games, it's all over. Those three lions decided that they were going to drag the wildebeest down into a ditch. And so they grabbed the wildebeest. They didn't kill it. It still was not dead. What they did was they kept it alive. Almost as if for sport. 
almost as if just to play around with it, almost as if just to toy with the wildebeest. And so what they did was, while it was still alive, they dragged it into a ditch. And we decided, our safari driver decided that he was going to follow these lions with the wildebeest. And we said, go, man, go. Yeah, man, we want to watch this. We want to see this, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all of the girls on the safari were like, oh, that's so sad. So sad. How could you, pastor? How could you enjoy something like that? I said, girl, it's nature. Nature. God's nature. See, fellas, that's what I had to do. God's nature. So they dragged the wildebeest into the ditch and we followed along. While in the, while dragging the wildebeest into the ditch, the wildebeest kept calling out for help. And there was no help. For you see, the other wildebeest understood the laws of survival. If you get caught, you die. If we don't get caught, we continue to live. So they decided to stay away. And brothers and sisters, while down in the ditch, our van was leaning over like that. We had the pictures, video cameras taking. Boy, look at this, man. Look at this. What do we tell everybody? Man, what do we tell everybody? We saw a live lion kill. No Discovery Channel. Man, we saw the real deal. No zoo where they feed the animals. No, we actually watched the lions take a, a, a wildebeest down. All of a sudden, y'all, five minutes passed. Five minutes passed, approximately. And it's almost as if the lions turned on another switch. They went into another gear. The lions looked at us, looked at the wildebeest, and all of a sudden you could hear them getting angrier or, or getting more aggressive. And they went, rrr, rrr, rrr. and then all of a sudden we heard two sounds. Have you ever popped open a bag of potato chips? Poof. One lion decided to open up the gut sack of the wildebeest. So it ripped into the wildebeest and popped it open. And at the same time, I'm not sorry, y'all, I'm sorry. At the same time, the lion that had the wildebeest by the neck decided that it was going to twist and break the neck of the wildebeest. So when you heard pop, you also heard, heard snap crackle too. I'm telling you what I saw, experienced, and the chills that went through my body. And yes, the ladies that were on the van with us, one of them sat back and was crying. You're barbaric, pastor. You're just me. I said, sister, didn't I? Let's pray. It's God's nature. They, and in that moment, we realized something. We said, you know what? First Peter 5, 8 takes on a whole new meaning now. When you get a chance to see it, to hear it, and to experience it for yourself. You come to understand when the Bible says be sober and be vigilant. Because the devil is as a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. Now there was one other item that I failed to tell you. Not only did we see it, the death. Not only did we hear the death. Let me tell you one other thing. We smelled the death. For you see, when they opened, when the lions ripped open the wildebeest, the wind suddenly shifted. Instead of downwind, somehow it turned upwind. And all of us were like, no, what is that smell? It was the smell of a fresh kill. It was the smell of new death, blood, all of the all of the the liver and the intestines of the animal were now exposed, and we watched the lions take that wildebeest 
and flip it from its side onto its back like a cat drinking milk out of a saucer. And they began to lick the blood. All three lions began to lick the blood. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not trying to hurt your feelings or mess with anybody's sensitivities. But I want to paint a picture for you that's not pretty because what we're dealing with today is not pretty. I want to paint a picture for you of reality because what we're dealing with today is real. Unless you recognize that you are chosen by God, you and I are susceptible to dying just like that wildebeest. If you don't understand that God chose you when he didn't have to choose you, you see, when you understand that God chose you, 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 you are part of a family of God. You're part of a group of people who decided to worship and love God with all their hearts beyond all of the rituals of our church, beyond just taking communion and beyond going to Sabbath school late. Oh, they don't go to Sabbath school late here in New Zealand? Everybody's at Sabbath school on time in New Zealand? Okay, yeah, right. Somebody say, yeah, yeah, right. Everybody shows up for prayer meeting in New Zealand? Yeah, right. Understand, God has chosen you. And the issue is not God. The issue is you and me. The issue is us in terms of our recognizing that God has chosen us. When you recognize that God has chosen you and that you are a royal priesthood, when you recognize that you are sanctified and set apart because of God's love, not because of anything that you and I have, then that is our protection. And like that wildebeest, Young men and young ladies, young adults all over this world and all over New Zealand and in Auckland and in Wellington and in other parts of New Zealand are susceptible to dying and being killed because the devil is a relentless hunter. One of the qualities of lions that are on the hunt is that they're relentless. So if they don't get the first kill, they'll find another kill. If they don't get the first wildebeest, they'll keep looking until they find the one that's slow enough, that's dumb enough, that's by itself, the one that is, is sick, the one that is hurting. They will do whatever it takes to get fed. And this week, we want to minimize, we want to eliminate, we want to subtract those that could be singled out, those that could be hurt, those that could be by themselves, those that are feeling like there's no hope for them, we want to minimize that group. We want to subtract. We want to, su we want to substantially take that group away from the devil's um, a list. We don't want any of our young people lost because they feel like they're by themselves. We don't want any of our young adults lost because they feel isolated. Because there's no family that they can go to and they can relate to and that they can share their blessings with and their pain. You've got to know that you have been chosen by God in spite of your problems, despite your heartache, in, in, in spite of your addiction. God has chosen you. So the devil is a liar and you got to let him know that. But you yourself have got to be reminded of that. You see, when we were on safari, one of the things we learned is that the enemy is relentless. That night we went into Bible study. After watching that, after seeing that, we went into Bible study. And we came to understand that from 1 Peter 5 verse 8, that it's time for God's young people and God's young adults to be sober and to be vigilant. Does that mean not having fun? No. You won't find somebody who has more fun about being a Seventh-day Adventist Christian than me. Oh, I enjoy myself. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We done it. Oh, whoa. See, y'all, y'all gonna see. But you gotta come. We enjoy our religion. Lord, we lift your name on high. Oh, that's good. But you know what? On a Monday when I'm not with you, I'm enjoying my religion. On a Tuesday when you don't think about me. I'm enjoying the God who created me. And it's all about recognizing that God has chosen you and me despite 
our issues and despite our weaknesses, God has chosen us. So when you see another train wreck, so to speak, or you see another young person out there who's been ravaged by sin, who's been beaten by the devil, who's been defeated by his lions, you need to recognize that if not for the grace of God, that could be you. First Peter 5a says, be sober and be vigilant. There's some things about God I want to remind you of this evening. I want to remind you, first of all, that God is omniscient. Everybody say omniscient. Come on, everybody say omniscient. That means that God is all knowing for those of you who may have forgotten. That means that God is all knowing. God chose you in spite of what he knows about you. God chose you despite what you don't think he knows about you. God chose you when you think that he forgot what you used to do. God chose you no matter what your problem may be, no matter what your victory may be, God chose you. No matter how many failed attempts to get up and run again and you keep falling down, God chose you. He is omniscient. That's number one. Secondly, God is omnipotent. Everybody say omnipotent. Oh, come on, y'all. Sound alive. Omnipotent. God is all powerful. That means that he is power when you are weak. That means that God is strong when you're feeling desperate and exasperated. God is omnipotent, young people. When the music is feeling so good and it's sounding just right, God is omnipotent. God chose you even though he may know you have a hankering or a desire for certain types of sin. You see, everybody's sin is not your sin. Well, somebody say amen. Every temptation may not be for you, but there's some temptation that's for you. And the enemy knows that. And one of the things we learned while we were on safari is that the lions have advanced scouts. We didn't know that. See, Discovery Channel never told me that. Discovery Channel never shared with me that lions could send two or three or even four lioness up ahead just to scout out. And to make little noises, false noises. Now stay with me. Lions have developed the ability. They're so cruel and so relentless and so cunning. They've developed, developed the ability to, to, to as, as we learn, to do what they call a false attack. To perform a false attack. So they'll grunt and they'll roar and there'll be nothing coming. Confusing the wildebeest, confusing their prey. So that when the prey, when the prey is unsuspecting, there is a real attack coming, but because there have been so many false attacks, they are more likely to not think it to be true. And so therefore, when they may try two or three times to, 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 to test their, their, their prey, on the fourth or fifth time, it may be the real deal. And all it takes is one meal to satisfy the pride. God is omnipotent, everybody. When we have overcome and we think we don't have to overcome anymore. You know, one of the things I've learned about being a Christian is that God keeps choosing to bring me over the same ground until I know that the victory is completely mine. Did you hear me? So young person... Just because you stop listening to certain hip-hop artists for a little while doesn't mean that they won't come back again. Just because you might have given up on Christina Aguilera, it does not mean that Britney Spears may not be more attractive the next time. Or oh, I know y'all may not. Okay, Missy Elliott or whoever else. Okay, 50 Cent or Eminem or whoever else. Just because you may overcome one thing doesn't mean that you, you can now relax. The Bible says be sober and be vigilant because the devil, in parentheses, is a relentless hunter. So God has to be omnipotent. And you've got to recognize that God is omnipotent. And God, that means that he's got power when you don't have power. 
That means that when you fall short and you give out and you give up, that means that God still got the power to get you up out of your rut. When you feel like you can't get up, God chose you for a specific purpose. And there's nobody else that God has created like you. And so he wants your special, unique abilities. You see, brothers, some of you guys have certain abilities that others of us do not have. Sisters, some of you have certain looks and certain kindnesses and certain tendencies and certain tendernesses about you that we may not have. Everybody may not have that. But God chose you despite anything that could go wrong. So God is omniscient. He's omnipotent. And finally, you know the third quality. He is omnipresent. You know that, right? God is omnipresent. So guess what? You need to recognize that you're chosen. Ask Jonah what happens when you run away from your mission. Jonah got chased into the belly of a whale. He got chased because he ran away from his purpose. Recognize that you are a chosen priesthood. You have been chosen. There's, you're not good looking enough. Come on, brothers. I'm sorry, brothers. Sisters, you're not nice enough or cute enough. There's nothing that you bring to the table. That made God choose you and me. God chose us because of his goodness. And he has a purpose for you, young person. He chose you. He saved you so that you may serve him. And now he's choosing you all over again. See, what I love about God is that you can't go nowhere without God. The Bible says, Lord, whither shall I go? If I go into the depths of the sea, behold, thou art there. If I go into the mountains, you're there. If I go to the east, you're there. If I go to the west, you're there. Wherever you go, the Bible says God is there. And he's constantly reminding us that he has chosen us. This week, we're going to minimize, we're going to subtract, and we're going to eliminate those who could be isolated because they fail to recognize and remember that they have been chosen by God for a special, specific mission. So what that means, my brothers and sisters here in New Zealand, is that we're going to get down into the word of God. We're going to deal with the word of God in this postmodern culture with new millennials on the horizon. We're going to deal in the word word of God, no matter how relativistic or humanistic our understanding of the word in life may be. God is omnipotent. And let me help you understand something. The battle is between the devil and Jesus Christ. And you and I have to choose, we've got to choose. God's already made his choice. Before you and I were born, Jesus died for us. And the Bible also says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. He chose us. Psalm 139 says that he knew us when we were in our mother's womb. He knew us. He knew our fabric of our being before anything could come about that we know as life. God knew us in our mother's womb. He chose you. And not only did he choose you, he keeps choosing you. He keeps choosing you. See, what I know is that there are young people who are here today who may not make it here next year. There are young people in this tent today, tonight, this evening, who may not make it next week. But you got to know that you've been chosen by God. See, when you understand that you've been chosen, that is your protection. Your innocence, your security, your power comes from knowing that I've been chosen. If it was rely, if it was reliant upon me, then I would be lost. But because God is omnipotent, uh, omnipotent, because He's omnipresent, and because He's omniscient, let the devil throw his best. Let him give it all. Because you see, I got a Savior who loves me. I've got a God who's watching over me, and I've got a God who understands that no temptation has taken you such as common to man. But with every temptation, God will provide what? Come on, provide what? A way of escape. Everybody say escape. A way of escape. 
So not only did he choose us, not only have we been chosen, he continues to choose us. And one of my, you know, I, I, I love studying the original languages. And there's phrasing and parsing and declensions in languages in the original Greek and in the Koine Greek. And some of those words that we'll get into later on in the week deals with the fact that not only did God choose us before we were born, he keeps choosing us after we refuse to choose him. He keeps coming back. He keeps knocking at your heart's door. I'm going to ask one of the musicians to come for me. I want y'all to understand something. The thing that's going to stop you or help you as we go through the week is recognize that one of the things we got to do, we've got to fall in love with Jesus. We've got to fall in love with him. We've got to fall in love with him because he chose us from the very beginning. This song is some song is a song that I'm going to ask. You're going to learn this song. We're going to know this song by the end of this camp meeting. Oh, I know that you've got a lot of songs that you sing here in New Zealand. But one of the songs I really want you to know and learn is falling in love with Jesus. The song says falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I ever done. Falling in love with Jesus. In his arms. I feel protected. In his arms. Never disconnected. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I ever done. Now, everybody repeat after me. I, come on, repeat. I have been chosen for a special work, for a special time. I hope you're not ashamed to praise God in this place. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I believe it is the power of salvation. God is looking for young men and young ladies who don't mind serving God out in the open. He wants young people who don't mind letting people know, I love the Lord. Oh, but didn't I see you smoking a joint the other day? Oh, I've been chosen not because of any goodness in me. Oh, but didn't I hear you use foul language the other day? He's omniscient. He chose me. But didn't you turn your back on somebody the other day? Yeah, but he's omnipotent. Didn't you tell me you quit going to church because there are nothing but a bunch of hypocrites in church? Ah, oh, but everywhere I go, he's omnipresent. Every time people remind you of what you've done, every time you're reminded of your failures, remember, he's chosen you. In spite of your weaknesses, in spite of your problems, he chose you because of his strength, his goodness. Come on, y'all, just listen to the words of this song. Falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I have ever done now, I'm not a singer but I love this song falling in love with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I had ever done. And that's it. Come on, sing it with me, everybody. Sing it with me. Come on, everybody. Falling in love with Jesus. 
falling in love with Jesus, falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I had ever done. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. I want to ask you to do something. Your heads are bowed right now and your eyes are closed. This week, you want to fall in love with Jesus all over again. This week, you want to fall in love with Jesus. You know what? You may have fallen out of love with him. But this week, you want to recognize. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. You want to recognize that I've been chosen. I've really got no other choice but to fall in love with him. Because whether I go, wherever I go, I can't get away from him. And I don't want to be isolated because if I'm isolated, I'll die. I've got a family. I've got a group of believers. I've got a group of brothers and sisters who, who, who may be imperfect, but they love the Lord too. Some of them are not quite right. But we've all been chosen. I want to fall in love with Jesus all over again. I want to fall in love with Jesus. Listen, we're going to spend this week, your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. You don't want to be disconnected. You want to fall in love with Jesus all over again. No matter how hard it is, no matter how far off you may feel, the great controversy is taking place in the wars between God and Satan, and Satan is thinking that he can claim your life. He's thinking he can claim your existence, that he can claim your soul. But the God, but the God we serve empowers us to say, devil, you are a liar. Falling in love. With Jesus was the best thing I had ever done. If that is your desire, I want to fall in love with Jesus all over again. I want to worship him in spirit and in truth. I just want you to raise your hand where you are. Just raise your hand. I want to fall in love with Jesus all over again. Oh, I, I don't want to fall in love with with, with tradition. I don't want to fall in love with <laughs> regulations. I want to fall in love with the person, Jesus Christ. Now, don't raise your hand if you're playing. Don't raise your hand if you're not sure. Play that for me, Richard. Come on, y'all. With Jesus Falling in love with Jesus. Sing it with me, everybody. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I had ever done. Then it says, in his arms, in his arms. Come on, raise your hands. In his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, in his arms, never disconnected, never disconnected. Oh no, in his arms, I feel protected. There's a no place I'd rather, I'd rather be. Come on, everybody, stand to your feet. Let's sing that song. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love. I can't hear y'all. Come on. With you. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I had ever done. In his arms, in his arms, I feel protected. Everybody. In his arms, I feel 
protected, in his arms never disconnected, in his arms never disconnected, oh no, in his arms I feel protected, there's no place I'd, ra I'd rather be. Come on, one more time, everybody, sing it like you mean it, come on. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love. Hold your hands up and wave them like me. With Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. The best thing I am. Musicians, quietly, quietly. I want you to slip out of your seat. If this camp meeting, chosen, by faith you're claiming it. I want you to come forward if you're going to claim that this camp meeting is going to be a turning point for you. You may not feel it. You may not even be able to see it. You may not quite understand it. But by faith, this camp meeting, this is going to be a turning point for you. I want you to slip out of your seat and come join me down front. Not because your friends do it, but because you know that this is your camp meeting. This is your opportunity to fall in love with Jesus all over again. God bless you. Is there someone else? There's other people. I'm not asking you to join the church. I'm asking you right now, to make a commitment to Jesus Christ all over again. I'm asking you that during this week, you're going to fall in love with Jesus all over again. See, some of you may serve the Lord. You may come to church because it's the thing your family wants you to do. It may not be something that's in your heart, but you're going to do it because you're going to come forward because you're claiming this as your opportunity to fall in love with Jesus. Oh, I don't care whether it's the first night of this tent, of this camp meeting, and you shouldn't care either. Tomorrow's not promised to you, but you recognize that you need to fall in love with Jesus. And when you fall in love with him, there's nothing to worry about. He's got you in the palm of his hand. Is there others? Are there others? You're claiming this camp meeting as the opportunity to fall in love with Jesus because God sees you. Come on. God sees you. Praise his name. You don't want this to come and then go. Come on up. Come on up front. Come on down forward. Come on down forward with me. Come on down front. I feel protected in his arms, never disconnected. Oh, no. In his arms, I feel protected. There's a no place I'd rather be. Heads about, sing the song, falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love. Jesus was the best thing I ever done. And the next verse says, in his arms I feel protected. In his arms I feel protected. In his arms never disconnected. In his arms never disconnected. In his arms, I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, on tonight, we recognize that you've chosen us. Oh my God, we've fallen far. We've fallen short. Lord, 
we've bruised our knees and we've cut our heads. And God, we've hurt others in the process. But you've chosen us. And you keep choosing us. So tonight, on this opening night, we want to send a very powerful message to the enemy. Oh Lord, we want to send a very powerful message to his imps. Thus far and no further. We want to say to him, get thee behind us, Satan. We want to say to him, Lord. We want to say to him, devil, you are a liar. God has my future. And he covers my past. So as we move throughout this week, oh God, help us to grow closer. Help us to recognize that you've chosen us because of your power. In this great controversy, Lord, help us to realize that we're worth something because you've chosen us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In his arms, I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather be. Clap your hands for these young people who've come forward, y'all. Give them a praise clap. <laughs> Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. In his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, never disconnected. In his arms, I feel protected. There's no place I'd rather. Falling in love. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Come on, y'all. Falling in love with Jesus. I want you to send the word out this week that we're serious about getting to know Jesus. Can y'all hear me? We're serious about enjoying the God we serve. We're serious about putting our energy and our hearts into Jesus this week. This is not just going to be some fun time, some play time. This camp meeting is going to be revival time. It's going to be revolution time. Why? Because the devil is a liar and he's laid claim on too many people that don't belong to him. And too many of us have given him what is not his to have. Your mind, your body, your destiny, your past, it all belongs to God. He's chosen you. So you let the young people and the young adults know this week. We're going to get down in Jesus Christ. We're going to have a good time. Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. Tonight's just the opening night. We're just laying a foundation for what we're going to do. Oh, we're going to see young men bless the Lord. We're going to hear young ladies testify to the goodness of God. Parents, children, right now here in New Zealand, by the grace of God in, in heaven, my father, your father, this evening, tomorrow, Sunday, chains will be broken. People will be loosed from hell. Lives will be changed. 
Hearts will be touched. You're not going to be the same. You're going to get into the love of God. And you're going to stay there. Because there's no place you'd rather be. I fell in love with Jesus a long time ago. It's the best decision I ever made. He blessed me with a wonderful wife. And two gorgeous children. Why? Because he chose me. And because I took time to recognize that I was chosen. Send the word out, y'all. This country boy from Louisiana, from Nolens, Louisiana, down in the southern part of the U.S. of A, is here to relate to his brothers and sisters in New Zealand and to challenge us all to accept Jesus Christ. Because I don't care what background you come from. I don't care what state you may live in. I don't care what country you may reside in. We all understand the love of Jesus. And we all know that there's no better place to be than in his love. Are you going to claim it with me this week? Come on, raise your hands. I want you to get on the phones tonight. Get on your cellies. Chirp somebody if you got to. And tell them they need to come to the youth tent. You've been chosen. And you want to claim their lives tonight. This is a week of revival, y'all. This is no play thing. Pastor Toupee, Elder Cross, we're not playing. This is for real. We're going to enjoy God this week. Be blessed. Everybody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed when I go in. Come on, I'm blessed when I come in and when I go out. I'm blessed. Hallelujah.